Wow! You know, I can't believe I'm about to clean one of the largest and strangest mass-produced mirrors ever made by Orion. Welcome back to the Reflector channel. This is part six of the restoration series on this huge Orion 14-inch go-to Dobsonian telescope. This is only a small part of the actual telescope. This is the lower half of the very tall tube part of the telescope. It actually has truss rods that are holding the top portion up. The mirror is dusty and it needs cleaned, but before I even think about touching this mirror, we need to have a talk about mirrors in general. <laughs> This small mirror is an example of what you might find in any reflector telescope. It's a disc of glass, and it's had a curved bowl shape ground into the front. And then it's been put into a special chamber that had aluminum vapor in it that got deposited on this. And the end result is basically you have this nice curved mirror, and it's the perfect shape to focus a sharp image in a telescope. Now, these come in all shapes and sizes, but they're all held in place at the back of the telescope with a metal framework. It's called a mirror cell, like this one. Now, the mirror cell has a bunch of stuff on it. It has collimation screws on the back, and on the front, it also has these clips that gently hold the mirror in place. Now, there's generally either three clips or four clips that do this, and their main job is to keep it from falling out of the front of the telescope. Now, the first thing I noticed that was different between this standard reflector style telescope mirror and the mirror that's in this giant Dobsonian is that this one doesn't have any clips. That's right. In fact, instead of using a disc of glass, Orion went with a proprietary design that is shaped like a mushroom of all things. It has sort of a concave back and then it has a thick stalk of glass right in the middle. And that's what the mirror cell clamps onto. Now that unique proprietary design is why I'm somewhat terrified to clean this mirror. You see, if I were to try to clean this mirror and accidentally break it, well, I could just go out and buy a replacement and I could probably find one for very little money actually. I could probably even buy a used one. If I were to accidentally break this mushroom-shaped proprietary mirror that Orion has used, well, it would be a total loss because I can't buy a replacement at any price. With that said, it is dusty and it needs cleaning. And you know, I've, I've cleaned a lot of mirrors before from uh, six inch mirrors up to 12 inch mirrors. So I feel pretty confident about cleaning this giant mirror especially since Orion was kind enough to provide very detailed instructions in the user manual that came with the telescope. But if you've never cleaned a telescope mirror before, I would recommend that you not start with a giant, unique proprietary telescope mirror like this one, okay? That's just my advice. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and clean this gigantic one-of-a-kind mirror from Orion. Okay, so here we are. I've taken the bottom of the telescope tube, flipped it upside down. This is the back end. This is where the mirror is. Uh, this metal framework here is the cell. This is what's holding the mirror in place. I've downloaded the user manual for the telescope. You can still get it from Orion, which is pretty awesome. Thank you, Orion, for doing that. And I'm following the instructions. So I have to remove the cell from the back end here. There's a bunch of Phillips head screws and uh, the mirror is never removed from the cell. That's where this differs from all of the other mirror cleaning videos that I've done. So we're gonna leave the mirror in here. We just have to be super careful. So if you go slow and you're careful, you should be okay. And then I'll show you the mirror. It's a really strange looking mirror, now, so I can't wait to show it to you. Uh, I'm gonna put a piece of tape on here for uh, indexing purposes so that I don't lose track of where it was. So when I put it back on, it'll go in the right spot. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit stressed out about this. This is a one of a kind mirror. Okay, so I'm going to put my hands in here and lift up. A little bit of an operation here, don't touch the sides. 
So there's the mirror. If you look at that, it's on a post. It's like a mushroom shape, sort of. Okay, it's actually surprisingly dusty. I'm going to set it down. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way. I'll clean this up a little bit, too. Oh, this is way lighter without the mirror in it. Okay, let's slide this on down here. Let's take a closer look. So this is more of a traditional telescope mirror, right? This one I think is about four, four and a half inches in diameter. And this is the 14 inch mirror. As you can see, it's quite large. You can see the layer of dust on there. Over here is where I think I, I touched it with uh, a cloth just to do a quick test. I know that's probably not the best, but if you look down here, you can see this glass is made kind of funny. If this were a traditional 12 inch or 14 inch mirror, it would actually be very thick about where my finger is from there to there. But using this technique, uh, they got rid of the clips. So there's no clips holding it down and uh, they were able to thin out the mirror. Now there's only one problem that I've seen. You can see that red stuff. That red stuff I think is residue from the grinding process or something like that. So when I clean this, I don't want to get that wet because I don't want that, in case it's really fine uh, grinding powder, I don't want that to get into the water. So I have to be super careful. This has a bit of a strange cleaning process. We're going to flip this upside down and dip it in soapy water. That's the first step. Only partially. And you do that for a couple minutes and you rinse it off and then we'll move on to step two. So let's get started on this process. Okay, I've got two basically baths of water here. They're room temperature. I have this one for the dipping and this one for the cleaning with cotton balls. I'll be putting dish soap and isopropyl alcohol in both of these. And let's go ahead and do that. They say about a cat full. The instructions say about a cat full. And mix it up. All right. I've also got distilled water and lots and lots of cotton balls, and I'll be explaining how those are used here in a second. Uh, if you have any jewelry, remove that. You don't want that to scrape the aluminum coating on the mirror. I've got two cups here that are filled with distilled water. Uh, we'll be using that in a little bit. And we've got cotton balls. So the first step, according to the instructions, are you dip this in the water just a little bit uh, for about a minute. And my hope is that since it's room temperature water, that the center mark circle won't come off. Now, the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm actually going to try to blow some of the dust off. So I've got my dust bulb here because it'd be great to have any large chunks of dust just come off. And yeah, it's that's a layer of dust that's not coming off. So I'm going to attempt to invert this and submerge it in the water. Ideally, you would have two people to help you do this. All right, here we go. For about a minute. I'm going to try to hold this for a minute. <laughs> All right. It says to swish it a little bit for about a minute. Okay, I think that's about a minute. Let all the water drip off. Okay. And now, you pour distilled water on it. Here we go. All right, so in the instructions it says to take your secondary tub and use cotton balls. Now I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna keep this wet. I don't care if the towel gets wet. Take, take cotton balls, you submerge them in the soapy water, and you gently go down like this 
I'm going to use a different side each time and just get rid of the cotton ball because the cotton balls are much cheaper than the mirror. Just be very gentle. Get a bunch of cotton balls out here. Remember, cotton balls are cheap. Just very gently, barely touching it. Okay, now they say to go the other direction. So we get more cotton balls. You just want to keep everything wet. Lots of cotton balls. All right, let's see how it looks. Let it dry. You know what? I think that it needs one more wash. Let's go to diagonal. One more wash and we should be good. All right, so what do we have? Well, we have the mirror. It's all clean. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. I did have to use some small corners of paper towels to get just a few of the drops that were left over. One of the great things about using distilled water is that most of that runs off. And if it does stay on here and it dries out, it shouldn't leave a ring or a spot. So this mirror is super clean right now compared to how it was before. I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours because I got some water on the frame. And then we're going to put it back into the telescope too. And in the meantime, I'm gonna clean that telescope tube because the inside of it is a little bit dusty too. I'm just gonna spray it out with some compressed air. By the way, if you're enjoying this series, please push the like button. It means the world to small channels like this. Thanks. There's a lot of dust around the inside of this, so it's just debris that's fallen in here over the years. I don't wanna use any harsh chemicals or anything because um, I'm afraid that'll mess up the paint. Let's see what we got. Well, water got into every nook and cranny on the mirror cell, so I did have to take out the collimation screws and carefully lift out the mirror, which still had part of the mirror cell attached to it. It's permanently attached to it. And now I'm just drying everything out, make sure there's no rust or corrosion that will take place after cleaning. It turns out it was a good idea that I took these collimation screws off because one of the plastic washers was missing. So I'm gonna make one out of just some milk jug material. Step one is to put the springs back in and then carefully set the mirror down here. I have blue tape here to make sure everything's lined up. All right, you can see how nice and shiny this is. It's, it looks really nice. Now I'm first going to pull it down so these are level. <clears throat> Being super careful. I actually did a kind of a rough measurement before I took these out. And basically I was able to put my index finger to the first knuckle in that gap. Yeah, that was a good place to start. 
Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Let's just make that the same all the way around. That's good there. That's good there. That leaves, uh, I think that leaves plenty of room actually. All right, so uh, now we have to put the locking screws in. Be very super careful here. Nothing too tight. And then the last one down here. Okay, now it's time, I guess, to put this back in the tube now that the tube is all clean. I have to be very careful here because I need to make sure that this is lined up and I have to make sure that the mirror doesn't touch the side. So if you remember the game operation, it's a little bit like that. I'm gonna be lowering the mirror in and I really don't want it to bang into the sides of the telescope. the holes are lined up. Let's go ahead and put these in. Okay, now that this has had all of the dust removed from the mirror, I'm going to do as much as I can to keep more dust from getting on it. So, so I've got these, they're basically very dense elastic uh, cloth. They're meant to put over stools, bar stools, but I use them on all my telescopes too. And they fit perfect and they keep the dust out. I know the other end has a dust cover, but I'll probably end up putting one on that as well. These things work great for keeping dust and bugs out. Alright, let's see if we can blind the camera here. So the mirror now is super clean. I honestly kind of underestimated how dusty and dirty it was. Uh, there was a layer of something else besides just dust. I actually had to clean it twice. Now I have to be honest, this video has gone a little bit longer than I expected and this task ended up being a little bit more stressful than I expected. If this was your first telescope, I would recommend not cleaning this mirror as your first mirror. It was a little bit of a tricky one, I have to be honest. But uh, if you've cleaned one before, then follow the directions in the Orion manual and you can probably do this. Just go slow and be careful, okay? There's a handful of jobs, kind of the top 10 of little tiny jobs that need to be done. And I'm gonna save those for the next video. Don't worry, they'll go very fast. And at the very end of the next video, we are gonna take this outside and we are going to point this at something awesome in the sky and we're gonna really test it out and see how it works. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and clear skies, everybody.